Okay, let's get on with today's lesson. We're talking about uh, map work today. And uh, you'll see that map work is actually very, very, very easy. We're gonna look at scale first, okay? So let's get straight into it. So now I've got a diagram here to help us um, understand scale. So here we have a diagram with a school bag. And in this diagram, in the corner there, as you can see, we have a ratio one is to 15. All right, so in this diagram, they've given us a ratio, one is to 15, and that's gonna help us interpret uh, scale with this diagram. So there's a question here. It says the scale of the diagram is one is to 15, determine the real width of the school bag in centimeters. Now, let's have a look what it says over here. There's something that says NB, which means important. So let's go across and see what it says. Ah, it says, you need to remember that ratios, especially when talking about scale, ratios have the same units on either side. Okay, that's very important to remember. So ratios have the same units on either side. Now, I know you're thinking, uh, Dale, where are the units in your ratio? Well, when it comes to maps and plans, the ratio, the scale that they give you, you can put any units there. You can have millimeters, uh, I'll write it in for you. So one millimeter is to 15 millimeters. You can have centimeters, which is the norm that, that we use centimeters. So you can have one centimeter is to 15 centimeters. You can have meters, you can have kilometers, you can have uh, inches if you want to. You can have footprints, you can have ice cream uh, cones, you can have anything you want. As long as what is on the left has the same unit as what is on the right. Okay. Um, Phyllis. I think we'll quickly go back to the scores here. So we've got quite a few people in top place in grade 11. There are three people with 14 out of 15. And then grade 10, we have three people with 50, 15 out of 15. So those are the top three names of the top for grade 11 and three names of the top for grade 10. We've got Luyanda, uh, Janu, and Sito Kozile in top three in grade 11. And Umpile, Vuyo, and Sonia, top three in grade 10. Okay. So coming back to our ratio we have the same units on either side of our ratio. Just remember that, it's very, very, very important. And how to interpret this ratio when it when it talks about maps and plans is that the, the number on the left, which is usually one, okay, is your ruler measured number. And the number on the right, it can be anything, is your measurement in real life, okay? So if I interpret this one is to 15 ratio for the bag, it's uh, I'm gonna choose, centimeters okay then one centimeter measured on this diagram will represent 15 centimeters in real life okay i'll say that again one centimeter measured on this diagram will represent 15 centimeters in real life okay so now in this question about this bag when they say determine the real width the key word there is the real width of the school bag in centimeters. They're not talking about ruler width. They're talking about the right-hand side here. Okay. So when they work the real width, you need to convert to 15 on the right-hand side here. Okay. But the first thing we're going to have to do is we're actually going to have to measure uh, our ruler measurement of this bag from the diagram and then convert it to a real life measurement using our ratio. Okay, and it just so happens that I have my ruler with me. You guys don't have to worry about the ruler. I've got a chair. So I'm gonna move my ruler up here and I'm just gonna go somewhere along this bag and I'm going to measure. I don't know if you guys can see there, but it looks like it's three centimeters. Okay, so I measure three centimeters with my ruler. All right, so I'm going to erase all this quickly. Just remember the one on the left is ruler measurement and the one on the right is the real world measurement okay so if i measure three centimeters on my ruler what is that going to give me in centimeters in the real world can anyone tell me i will look coming oh, in fast fast than the fast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay well done pavalo all right 45 okay so what is pavalo doing what he's saying, well, what do I, what did I do to go from my one centimeter from my ratio to three centimeters? 
that I measured in my ruler. I had to times it by three. One times three is three. So on the other side here, to go from our real world uh, measurement to the real world measurement that they want here, I also need to times by three. So the sum that you're going to do, the calculation you're going to do, is you're going to say three centimeters. And each one of those must represent 15 in the real world. So times by 15. And that will give me 45 centimeters in the real world. Okay. So the real world measurement is 45. And my ruler measurement is 3. Okay. So 3 is to 45. All right. So I can write here. 3 is to 45. Now, they don't want you to write a ratio. They just want you to tell them what is the real world <clears throat> width of this bag. So it is 45 centimeters. Okay. Uh, cross multiplying is more with fractions, I wonder. Um, we are kind of doing cross multiplying. We're multiplying on the left and we're multiplying on the right. Um, but if you think of it like this, what are you doing to the one to get three? You're multiplying by three. You must do the same to the other side. So this calculation here is just showing the calculator steps that we're going to do on our calculator okay so three times 15 to get to 45 all right so it's not that difficult Sonia I don't know why you're worried it's not that difficult at all okay well let's have a look at another example over here where did the three come from ah Chiyama, good question I measured it see my ruler here I've got this fancy ruler <laughs> and I used it to measure the bag and I measured three centimeters on my ruler. Okay. So the ruler measurement is three. They're asking what is the real measurement? What is the actual width of the bag? If you measure three centimeters off the diagram. Okay. Yes, Phyllis. So one times three to get three and then 15 times three to get 45. Very good. Okay. So if they give you a ratio scale and they want you to convert from what you measure on your diagram to what is in the real world, you can use that ratio scale to help you solve that problem. All right. Now, maps and plans, they often give you a ratio scale, but for maps specifically, they can give you another type of scale. So there's two that they can give you to work with. I wonder if anyone else can tell me what other scale do they usually give you to work with with maps and plans? We, you've seen the ratio scale in action. What other scale do you guys know about maps and plans that they give you? Bar scale, who was that? Very good. Well done, Aldandi. Good. Line scale, same thing. Pavala, well done. Bar scale and line scale. Exactly the same thing. Very good, Sakula. Well done. Okay. So bar scale, line scale, exactly the same thing. All right. Good job. Well done. Word scale, Sakile. Yeah, they don't often give you a word scale in the question, but they could uh, ask you to translate the ratio scale uh, into words, which is very easy to do. So if you look at the ratio, one is to 15, you can say you interpret it as one unit of measurement uh, on my diagram or my map must give me 15 of the same units in the real world. So if it's one centimeter on the on the diagram or the map, must give me 15 centimeters in the real world. So it's important to say something on your map must represent something in the real world. Okay. All right, fraction scale. Uh, no, not really, they don't really use fraction scales that much. Number scale, the poor number scale is a, there is a type of scale called a number scale. This one here, the ratio one, is often referred to as a number scale. Okay, very good. All right, so let's have a look at this scale here, which is a bar or line scale or linear scale. Okay, so if you look at my diagram now, there where the school bag is, you will see a bar. All right, it works a little differently to the ratio. Okay, so here. Is the same statement. They say the scale of the diagram is 1 is to 15. Um, or they might not even show 1 is to 15. They might remove that. They say here is a diagram. Determine the real width of the school back in meters. So <clears throat> how to interpret this bar scale? So what you need to do is measure a portion 
of the scale. So in this case here, yeah, this bar scale has got a, a black bar at the front and a white bar at the back. So if we measure the first bar and get a ruler measurement for it, that ruler measurement must represent the real world measurement underneath. Okay. So if you measure this bar and you measure one centimeter, then underneath you can see it goes from zero to 15. That black part of the bar, which measures one centimeter, must represent 15 centimeters in the real life. So these numbers underneath uh, are often the real life measurement. Sometimes they will put um, numbers on the top. Okay, so sometimes they'll actually put numbers on the top like uh, zero centimeters and then one centimeter. So they'll actually give you the ruler measurements, um, but sometimes they don't. You actually have to get a ruler and measure it yourself. Okay, so sometimes they'll give that to you, the top one, the ruler measurement, but sometimes you'll have to actually use your ruler to measure it yourself. So let's pretend that we weren't given it. Okay, so what we're going to do is measure this first portion of the bar on our diagram and see what it is. Okay, so here's my ruler again. Okay, so if I take my ruler and I go up to my bar, I don't know if you guys can see that, but that first portion of the bar, that black portion of the bar there is exactly one centimeter. Okay, so to interpret this, one centimeter, this portion here, is exactly 15 centimeters in the real world. So the top part is the ruler measurement and the bottom numbers there are the real life uh, measurements. Okay, so it's very similar to the previous question, which was one is to 15. One centimeter on my ruler represents 15 centimeters in the real world. Okay, so it's saying the exact same thing. It's just representing the scale in a different way. So you need to know how to interpret um, both of these scales. Okay, are there any questions about that? Everyone happy so far? So you must remember for this section in the exam, you're gonna to have to have a ruler with you. So please make sure you have a ruler. Besides a calculator, you need a ruler for this section as well. They might get you to measure some things on your diagrams. All right. Any questions about this? Anyone want me to go over it one more time before we try and practice this? Or are we all good and ready to go? Everyone happy with bar or linear scale and the number scale? If you're not happy, please raise your hand, put in chat, turn your mic on and talk to us before we get going into some questions. Why is everyone so quiet? I don't, I don't know. I think it's the end of term, Kia. I think it's the end of term feeling. Everyone's kaput. You're Everyone's no. tired. I don't blame them. I feel it as well. Okay, yeah. at least we have a reaction from Tiamo. Yeah. All right, Akil, no problem. Okay, Akil, would you like me to explain the number ratio or the bar ratio? Or both? Akil, just type in chat there which one you'd like me to go over. Kamo says both. Both? Akil, both? Yeah. All right, let's do both again. And then someone asked for the bar. All right, so we're going to do... I think both. We'll cover, yeah, we'll cover all the bases. I hope everybody's listening and they have their thinking caps on. Yeah. Okay, so here's a scenario. There's a, a diagram. You sorry, Kia? Oh, I see Lisa Kvelis says they can't hear anything. So I'll help you now, now. All right. They can't hear. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right. So they'll give you a diagram and a scale on your diagram. So we see in this diagram, the scale is one is to 15. Okay. Which means that this image on the diagram isn't the real world image. It, it's been shrunken down. So the bag is much bigger than this. So this diagram image here is a, sh is a sh shrunk down version of the real image. So we have to use a scale to work back to find out what the real size of this bag is. And they're telling us the scale 
of this bag compared to the real one is one is to 15. So if we interpret the scale, the one is the diagram ruler measurement of the bag, okay? And the 15 is the real world measurement of the bag. So what we're saying is if for every one measurement, every one unit that you measure on this bag, it represents 15 of those same units in the real world. So in this case, one centimeter measured on this diagram must represent 15 centimeters of the real bag in the real world. Okay, so that's the relationship here. One on the diagram represents 15 in the real world. Okay, now the question is saying, we want you to go ahead and tell us what is the width, the real width of this bag. Okay, now the key here is to look at the word real. Okay, so if we look at the diagram, this isn't the real width, this isn't the real size of the diagram. We need to calculate how wide this bag actually is. Okay, so we're going to measure first with our ruler the width of the bag. All right, so you'll take your ruler and you will go up to your bag on the diagram and measure the width. And my ruler says that the width of this bag is three centimeters. Okay, so I've got three centimeters measured with my ruler. Okay. But now what does each centimeter represent 15 centimeters in the real world? So how do I get to a real world answer here? So we need to multiply this three by 15 because every single one of them, every single centimeter represents 15 centimeters in the real world. So if I've got three centimeters measured on this bag, it must represent three times 15 centimeters, which is 45 centimeters in the real world. So this 45 is the real world width of the bag when I measured three centimeters, the width of three centimeters on my diagram. Okay, I hope that's very clear. Um, let's look at the same thing. Akil, yes. Akil, you have a question. Akil, we're gonna I'll unmute you. Now. All right, Akil. Can you hear us? Can you talk to us? Akil, you there? Un unmute from your side, Akil. There we okay, go. All right, Akil. We you can talk to us why now, is it that you have some multi? Why is it that you have to multiply the 15? Okay, good question. Thank you. Thanks for the question. All right. So the reason why we multiply is because of the relationship between the two numbers. Okay. So if I said to you, um, let's think of it like this. Let's say uh, one person can carry uh, five apples. One person can carry five apples. Okay. Then I ask you a kill. How many apples can four people carry? How would you work that out? I kill you there. You with me? Yes. Yes. So if I, if I say one person carry five apples, how many apples altogether? can four people carry? What would you do to calculate that? In a if, two... one, if one can carry five, how many can four carry altogether if each one carries five? And there's four people. If one can carry five, two can carry 10. Ten. Three, three can carry. Fifteen. That's it. And four can carry. Twenty. That's it. So if one carries five, how many can four carry? What kind of sum could we do? We could say five times four. Four. Okay. That's it. So if one has five, how many will four have? We need to multiply that up. 
to get to the total of 20. It's very similar to uh, how this ratio works. So this ratio says for every one centimeter on this diagram, you have 15 centimeters in the real world. So what if I measured two centimeters on my diagram? How many centimeters will I have in the real world? If one is if one is 15, how many will two give me? 20. Uh, should give me double 15. Okay. Double 15 is? 15 times two is 30, eh? Two. Yeah. So how many will three give me? How are we going to work that out? <clears throat> well, we can... We can say to ourselves, let me write it like this. We can say to ourselves, what did I do to that one to get three? I had to multiply it by three. So what must I do to the 15 to get my number? I have to do the same thing. I'm going to multiply it by three. So the sum I have to do is three times 15 equals 45. So the ratio, if you, if you wanted to write it as a ratio, it would be three is two. 45. Okay, so if one gives me 15, two will give me 30, and three will give me 45. And the sum we can do to go up every single time is multiply by 15. Okay. Okay. Does that, does that help a little bit? Yes. All right, can you guys still hear me? Is the sound clear? Just let us know if you, if you uh, guys are struggling to hear me. From my side, it's perfect. All right. Thank you, Kia. All right. So here's the sum again. 3 times 15 equals 45. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to go down to the bar scale. All right. It's a very similar relationship, but it's in a diagram form. All right. Not numbers. It's in a diagram form. Okay. So on the top, of the bar we're going to measure with a ruler and underneath the bar those numbers there are the real world measurements all right so what this means is you measure a portion of this bar and we are going to measure the first portion of the bar which is that black portion of the bar okay so i'm going to take my ruler and i'm going to actually on my diagram i'm going to measure that first portion of the bar and I measure one centimeter with my ruler. Okay, now the bar scale says, for this much measurement of this black portion of the bar, you must have 15 centimeters in the real world. So we just so happen to measure that this first portion of, of the bar with our ruler is one centimeter. Okay, so if we had to think about this relationship, every one centimeter on this diagram must represent 15 centimeters in the real world. It's very similar to the ratio one we had. Okay, what if I didn't want to measure one centimeter? What, what if for some weird reason, uh, I like using even numbers and I would rather measure the whole thing? Okay, just so happens I want to measure the whole thing. Well, the whole bar is two centimeters. So my ruler measurement of the whole bar is two centimeters and they're saying well this much of the bar which is two centimeters represents 30 centimeters in the real world okay so then here's a question what if i went to my bag and i actually measured that the bag's width in fact let's let's not do width let's do length what if i measured that the bag's length was six centimeters Okay, then what would the real life measurement of the length of the bag be? If my ruler length of the bag is six centimeters, what would the real life measurement of the length of the bag be? Who can tell me? So I measure the length of the bag from the top down to the bottom and I get six centimeters. What would the real life length of that bag be? Can anyone tell me? All 
All right, we got an answer of 180 and an answer of 90. Anyone else? All right, we got 90 cents. Oh, let Tabor, you don't know how happy you just made Kia putting your units in. I love Sonia. them units. <laughs> yeah, you just made Kia very happy. Okay, we've got 90s. And Akil's got 180. Lowetta's with 90. Hmm. All right, I love it when we get different answers. All right, Minnie's got 90 as well. Okay, let's have a look. All right, I'm going to move my diagram over a little bit and I'm going to move this bar over a little bit and I'm also going to shrink it a tiny bit and I'll put it over there. Okay. All right, let's have a look. Let's have a look and see. So we measured the length is six centimeters. Now, originally, I measured the first portion of this bar as one centimeter. Okay, so from there to there, it was one centimeter. So this part of the bar is one centimeter long with my ruler. And they are telling me underneath the bar is the real world length. They're saying your one centimeter measurement, this black portion of the bar, must represent 15 centimeters in the real world. Okay. So your one centimeter ruler measurement represents 15 centimeters in the real world. So if you get one centimeter ruler gives you 15 centimeters real world, what will six centimeters on your ruler give you in the real world? Well, every one gives me 15. So what do I do to the six? I need to times it by 15 because every one centimeter is 15 in the real world. Okay, so it times it by 15. Let's use the calculator, get it to do the work for us. Six times 15 is 90. So this bag is exactly 90 centimeters long in the real world because it's six centimeters long in my diagram. Okay. So you actually, with the bar scale, you actually have to get your ruler and measure it. If they don't tell you what that little portion is, you have, actually have to get your ruler and measure it, and then from there, uh, do the calculation. Okay. Uh, sometimes they'll actually write the ruler measurement on top of the bar, like I've done, but sometimes they actually, you have to measure it yourself with a ruler. Okay. In the real world, sorry, intercausal, in the real world. Okay, so you're talking about the diagram world versus the real world. What's on my diagram versus what's in the real world. So in real life, this bag is actually 90 centimeters long, but they shrunk it down for my diagram here. Okay, so they're asking us, hey, this is a diagram, here's a bar scale. Tell us how long is this bag in the real world? It's real length, it's actual length. Okay, and we have to use that bar scale to do that for us. All right, I hope everyone's clear on this because now it's your time to shine. Shine brighter than um, Rihanna's diamond, guys. <laughs> yeah, shine brighter than the diamond. Okay, it is real length, that's it. It's real length. So if you had to see this bag in the shop, it's real length in the shop, not the length in the diagram, it's real length in the shop. Yeah, real length, real world length. I'll just use real name from now on. So here's a scenario. I'll read it with you. It says, the drawing alongside shows a plan of the dimensions of a bedroom. So we have a rectangular bedroom. Okay, it's a drawing of a bedroom. It's not the real thing. It's the drawing of the bedroom. Okay. Now this drawing is a rectangle and it says here, the drawing width is six centimeters. So this drawing on a piece of paper, it's width if you had to measure it with a ruler, six centimeters. So this six centimeters here is the ruler width. And the nine centimeters for the length is the ruler length, not the real world. This bedroom is not nine centimeters in the real world. It's nine centimeters on your piece of paper. Okay. And they give you a scale for this diagram. They say the scale for this diagram is one is to 50. All right, so I'm going to help you translate that. All right, so one is to 50. 
That means for every one centimeter on this diagram, it represents 50 centimeters in the real world. I'm using that, those words again. Okay, so one centimeter on my map measured with a ruler represents 50 centimeters in the real world. Okay, so that's the interpretation of this question. All right, so there's the information for you. So question one, we're going to do that one first. Just question one, and I know people are already doing it. Determine the real length, real world length, and width of the rectangle in centimeters. Okay, the real length and width of the rectangle in centimeters. Off you go. All right, now I'm going to check if these if you guys are working. I see the pool is busy. I like good, that. Good. Good. We got Sonia already having an answer for us there. There's Vivian with some answers as well. Good. And they didn't forget their units. Are you seeing yeah. this? <laughs> well done. Don't forget your units. Very good. Lesh Lokonolo, are you working there? How are the answers coming? All good? No, oh dear. Do you want to ask a question about it? You're welcome to ask a question. You can, do you want to ask a question? We'll turn your microphone off. Hold on a second. All right, there we go. You have a question. I don't understand. All right, let me help you a bit. Okay, so this is a diagram of um a bedroom so it's like we're looking at the bedroom from the top of the roof from, if you were in the ceiling of the bedroom looking down at the bedroom like you were a, a a bug on the ceiling of the roof and you look down at the bedroom you would just see a rectangular shape okay it's just the it's the shape of the bedroom it's a rectangle all right so it's almost like you're looking at the floor of your bedroom all right, and this floor of the bedroom here, they tell you that if you had to measure it on your on your question paper, the the width would be six centimeters, and the length of it would be nine centimeters. Okay, so they're saying in this diagram, the width is six centimeters if you measure with a ruler, and nine centimeters if you measure with a ruler for for length. They're saying these are the diagram's dimensions. These are the measurements on the diagram. They want to know what is the real length of this bedroom. They want to, so this is not these centimeters here is not the real length. That's just for the diagram. So what they want to know what is the real actual length and width of this bedroom? Okay. They tell you you can use this scale here to help you calculate it. So if you look at the scale, the scale says one centimeter on your drawing, on your diagram, will represent 50 centimeters in the real world. Okay, so if you have six centimeters on your diagram, how many centimeters in the real world? Well, what if it wasn't six? Let me use a smaller number. What if it was two centimeters on the diagram well i know one centimeter is 50 centimeters in the real world so how many centimeters will two on my diagram give me in the real world if one is 50 then two must give me you can double it so if, if oh. one gives you if one gives you 50 what will two centimeters give you so we're timesing this by two. You're saying one times two is two. 
we do the same thing for the other side you see what will you get you can use the calculator so we can say 50 times 2 a hundred very good so it's a hundred so two centimeters measured on my diagram must give me a hundred centimeters in the real world okay but what if it was six it will be one times six one times very good six. one times six and then on the other side we also times by six yes Mm -hmm. Now I understand. Okay, good. So 50 times 6 will give you? 50 times 6. Mm -hmm. 300. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well done. Good job. And now I understand. Excellent. Well done. Thank you. Okay. Let's go over the answers one more time. We've done the uh, the width. All right. We did the width here. I'm just going to write it out neatly again. So I'm just going to erase this and I'll write it out neatly again. Okay. So for the width, I'll write the width. We had six centimeters on our diagram. So to get to our real world measurement, we had to times this bar. 50 and we get 300 centimeters i hope you write your units then for the length we have nine centimeters on our diagram so we times that by 50 and we get 450 centimeters in the real world so this bedroom's dimensions in the real world the real dimensions of this bedroom is 300 centimeters by 450 centimeters okay now question two says convert your answers for question one into meters yo there's a lot of answers here excellent convert your answers for question one into meters now you gotta remember the measurement course we did these are metric units you have to know how to convert in the metric unit system. You have to know that they're not going to give you a formula for that. Okay, so for question two, we're going to take our width. I'm just going to write width here again. We have 300 centimeters. To get to meters, what do we need to do? Anyone tell me what calculation do we need to do to go from centimeters to meters? Pablo. Let me quickly unmute. Yes, Pablo, speak to us. We divide by a hundred. Very good. Thank you, Pablo. We have to divide by 100 because there are 100 centimeters in every meter. Now, if you go back to the measurement course we did, you have to know your metric unit system. You have to know it. All right, you have to memorize it. Okay, so you divide by 100. So this will give you three meters because there are 100 centimeters in every meter. Okay, so the width is actually three meters and the length. We'll do the same thing. So we take our 450 and divide by 100 and we will get 4,5, uh, almost right, centimeters, meters. Okay. All right, next question, question three, there it is on the screen. Calculate the real area of the rectangle in meters squared. And I'll give you a clue. All these answers that we've just got now for question one and two are real dimensions in the real world. So when they talk about real area, you can use these answers here. Okay, so calculate the real area of the rectangle in meters squared. Now, I haven't given you a formula for this. I'm hoping that you'll remember the formula for the area of a rectangle. Let's see if you can get it. Sakile. Hold on a second, Sakile. We're just going to unmute you. 
You can talk you to us, Akile. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Can hear you. How are you? I'm good. <laughs> um, I would say to calculate the area of the rect the red triangle, aren't you gonna say a area is equal to length times breadth? Absolutely. And you're gonna on the from question two, I think. Yeah. Absolutely. Well done. Thank you for that, Akile. Well done. Good job. Yes. Okay. So the area, <laughs> area equals uh, length times width. That's the formula. Now, they should give it to you in the exam, but I wanted to test to see if you guys remember. Okay. So let's see. We're going to take these measurements now. All right. For, for question three. So area equals length times width. All right, so I'm going to substitute my values in here now. So the length is 4,5 meters, and my width is 3 meters. And this will give me, let the calculator do the work, so 4.5 times 3, 13,5 meters squared. All right, square meters. That's what the question wanted. Let's check. They want the area of the rectangle in meters squared. Yes. All right. So we've given them the area of the rectangle in meters squared. Very good. Well done. And I love the units. You see that, Kia? I love it too. Like, I'm so glad that we constantly keep reminding them. Yeah, it's good. It's good. All right. Well done. Very good. Well done, Sakile. Good job. All right. Question four. Now, question four, I've written the grade 11. Grade 10s, you can do this if you want. But this is specifically for the grade 11s. Okay, let's have a look at the question. It says, if you wish to draw in a bed into this diagram, which has a real length of two meters in the real world, how many centimeters long will the bed be in your drawing? Oh, man, there's a lot to this. The real length of this bed is two meters. How many centimeters long will it be in the drawing? Okay. Now, I'm not going to say anything else. I'm not going to give you any clues. I want to see who's firing on all cylinders tonight. I'll go back to the question. You wish to draw a bed into this diagram. Its real length in the real world is two meters. So what will its length be in the diagram? Hmm. We have answers popping in so fast. These guys that put the answers in fast, I really worry. The speed is fantastic, but is the quality good? <laughs> The speed is incredible, but the quality good. So I'll say the question again. You want to draw a bed into this diagram. The real length of the bed is two meters. How many centimeters long will the bed be in the drawing? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> The speed is incredible, but is the quality uh, good? Mm -hmm. You see, math literacy is all about interpretation of the question. Oh dear. Okay, I can tell you that none of these answers are correct. Sambula has something different for us. Sambula's got something different. Hmm. That's a bit different. Ten thousand centimeters. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. So, <laughs> this 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 rectangle is only nine centimeters long. I'm not gonna put 10,000 in there. This rectangle diagram is only nine centimeters long. 
I can't put 10,000 in there. <laughs> I think you're going the wrong way. You need to come back the other way. You zigged when you should have zagged. All right, there's 11 point, <laughs> There's 11.5 from El Zondi. See, this is why I only go over to the grade 11s, but watch, I think the grade 10s are also up for the challenge. Yeah. Ah, a thousand, Sakile. You're going to make it very big. Our kill's got 75, 4.5. Oh. <laughs> Everybody's just guessing at this he point. Was, yeah, it's like, okay, whatever. Let's just put a number down. I'm going to give it one more minute. I think someone's working furiously in the background. And of course, it says 20. But Bola's like, I'm done. I'm out. Yeah, no. <laughs> They're throwing him the towel. They're Stepping out. Like, no. like, I've had enough. Probably, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was it they were saying at the end of the last lesson? Yeah, oh, fry okay. me, Lord. I'm your child. It's not make sure. <laughs> there it is. Is not make sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. All right. Let's see. One or two more answers. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's not make sure. All right. Let me put you out of your misery. Okay. I'm going to read this question one more time. Let's read the question one more time. It says, so this is a drawing of a bedroom. And they say, if you wish to draw in a bed that has a real length of two meters, a real length, it's real world length is two meters, which is normal for a bed, right? Beds are normally two meters long. But we can't put two meters onto this diagram. This is not a, a real world diagram. This is a shrunken down version of the real world. Okay, so they're saying it's a two meter bed in the real world, but you need to draw that onto this diagram, which has a scale of one is to 50. So how long in centimeters must you draw this diagram? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna give you the diagram now. Hold on a second, bear with me. Even my Microsoft One programs like that say so I had enough. We're gonna to have to restart it again. It's like loading. Everybody's chain. just going down. <laughs> yeah, everything's going down. All right, let me quickly do it for you. I'm going to delete all of this quickly. All right, watch guys, watch carefully now. I'm gonna go and do this question. So the real world length of this bed is two meters. Okay, they want to know in the drawing what must it be. Now you guys did the first step right. We need to first convert this into centimeters because scale, like I said, has the same units on either side. And our drawing is in centimeters. So we're going to work in centimeters. So you guys did the right thing by converting your two meter bed into centimeters first. Okay, you all multiplied by 100 and said, well, in the real world, this bed is 200 centimeters. That's correct, absolutely right. The bed is 200 centimeters in the real world. But what is it on the diagram? On the diagram, one centimeter represents 50 in the real world. So every 50 centimeters in the real world represents one centimeter on my diagram. So if we go from the diagram to the real world that we have to multiply by 50, what do we do to go from the real world what do we go from yeah. to go to the real world back to the diagram? We have to divide by 50. So we're going from the real world back down to the diagram. The bed in the real world is 200 centimeters. We divide it by 50. That gives us four centimeters in the real world. So on my diagram, I would use my ruler and measure four centimeters for the length of my bed. Now, there was someone that gave that answer. Yeah, I'm Ayanda, going through the chat. Ayanda, right now, Ayanda to yes, it. well done, Ayanda. Sonia was close, 4.5. Sambulo, well done, Sambulo. 
Good job to those two. Ayanda and Sambulo there both got four centimeters. Sakile, so, so I'll explain it one more time quickly. So our ratio is one centimeter is to 50. Okay, I'm going to erase all of this other stuff. Or well, let's leave it there for now. So that means the ruler measurement on my diagram, if it's one centimeter measured on my diagram, it's 50 centimeters in the real world. Which means if it's 50 centimeters in the real world, it must come down to one centimeter on my diagram. So in the previous questions, we were going from diagram to real world and we were multiplying. So if I write it like this, well, that's Thursday's letter. Let me write it like this and then you'll understand. I'll write diagram and real world. So if we want to go from diagram to real world, we have to times by 50 because one on my diagram is 50 in the real world. It gets bigger. Okay. But if we want to go from real world back down to the diagram, we have to divide by 50. Okay. Because every 50 in the real world represents one on my diagram. So if I have 50 centimeters in the, 50 centimeters in the real world, how do I get back to one? I divide by 50. To get back to one okay so you've got to divide by 50 when you're going from real world back to diagram all right okay so that grade 11 question was a little bit more challenging we had to do two steps number one we had to first convert into centimeters all right so step one convert it into centimeters because our ratio and the map is in centimeters so we need to work in centimeters and then number two we need to go from the real world i'll put your rw back to the diagram which is four centimeters. So we divided by 50. Okay. All right. Well done, Sakile. Okay, everyone. That's the end of today's lesson. This will be in the quiz, a very similar question, not the grade 11 one. We'll, uh, the similar <laughs> questions will be, will be in the quiz on Thursday. Okay.